Hello, this is Dr. Jack Myers. Welcome to Jack Myers Ministries and Life Family Church Podcast Channel. Be blessed by this message. So two things I'm going to talk to you tonight. And I, I made an outline today because somebody had asked me about many years ago, especially when we do our Believer's Authority class for Life Christian University, about names of spirits. Names of spirits. So I looked in the Word of God, more specifically pertaining to the names of spirits, not necessarily limited in that, because there's spirits behind individuals. Like, there's no such thing as the spirit of Jezebel. Can't find it in the Word. It doesn't say spirit of Jezebel. It says in Revelation chapter 2, it says in this woman, Jezebel. So, but it doesn't mean that there's not an unclean spirit behind the influence. You following me? So sometimes Christians use these colloquial expressions that aren't even in the Bible. I think we ought to just stick with the Word of God. Can you say amen? So I'm going to give you um, 21 names of spirits in the Bible. And I think we ought to just stick with the Bible because, you know, in the uh, deliverance movement way back in the 70s, I mean, everything was called a devil. There was a nicotine spirit. There was a gambling spirit. There was a card devil, card playing devil. I mean, they, and then they brought barf bags to church, you know, I mean, so some of you, some of you young people, you don't even know that. You didn't miss anything. I'll just tell you that right now. You know, sometimes everything starts out good, but then it gets kind of weird, you know? So, um... I'm sure you're probably going to want a list of these, but you can tell because there's, these are, in, so these are names in the Bible, okay? Number one, Numbers 5.14 says there's a spirit of jealousy. And it says this, Numbers 5.14 says, and the spirit of jealousy came upon him and he, and he be jealous of his wife and she be defiled. Or if the spirit of jealousy shall come upon him, and he be jealous of his wife, and she not be defiled. Number two, an evil spirit. Judges 9.23, then God sent an evil spirit between Abimelech and the men of Shechem, and the men of Shechem dealt treacherously with Abimelech. Number three, a sorrowful spirit. 1 Samuel 1.15, and Hannah answered and said, no, my Lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Number four, and I'm going I'm to have Andrew make a copy of this, so you can take notes. It's a good thing, too, but you're going to get a copy. Number four, familiar spirit, 1 Samuel 28, 7. Then Saul said unto his servants, Seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servants said to him, Behold, there is a woman that hath a familiar spirit at Endor. Does it indoor sound familiar? I think that's either in um, the Lord of the Rings, right? And maybe even Star Wars. And, and maybe um, with um, the Mandalorian. Indoor. Isn't that interesting? You know, in some of these movies that have come out, I think Satan influences it because of the pre-Adamic race and the race before so he drops these thoughts into people's minds to create these movies. Number five, lying spirit. First Kings twenty two twenty two. And the Lord said unto him, wherewith he said, I will go forth, and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of the prophets. And he said, thou shalt persuade him and prevail against go forth and do so. Number six, spirit of princess. Spirit of princess. Psalm 76, 12. He shall cut off the spirit of princess he is, a te- he is terrible to the kings of the earth. Number seven, spirit of beast. Ecclesiastes 3.21. Who knoweth the spirit of man that goeth upward and the spirit of the beast that goeth downward to the earth? Number eight, spirit of vanity and vexation. Vanity and vexation. Ecclesiastes 4.4. 4. Again, I consider it all travel and every right work for this man is envied of his neighbor. This is also vanity and a vexation of spirit. Number nine, spirit of the gods. Daniel 5, 14, I even heard of thee, the spirit of the gods in thee, and the light that understanding and excellent wisdom is found in thee. Number 10, spirit of whoredoms, Hosea 5, 4. 
They will not frame their doings to turn to their God, for the spirit of whoredoms is in the midst of them, and they have not known the Lord. Number 11, unclean spirit, Zechariah 13, 2. And it shall come to pass in that day, says the Lord of hosts, that I will cut off the names of the idols out of the land, and they shall no more be remembered. And also I will, will cause the prophets and the unclean spirit to come out of the land. Matthew 12, 43, when the unclean spirit has gone out of him, he walketh through dry places and seeketh rest and finds none. Mark 5, 8, for he has said unto him, come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. Luke 4, 33, and in the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil and cried out loud in a loud voice. So Jesus usually used, and there was a couple times that he used, you know, you deaf and dumb spirit, come out. Um, he, when he was talking to the guy, the demoniac of the Gadarenes, he asked him, who are you? We are legion, which means we are many. As a matter of fact, the legion was 6,000. Talk about a bad day. Golly. Number 12, dumb spirit, Mark 9, 17. And one of the multitude answered him, said, Master, I brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. I mean, that's totally rampant through our government. Praise God, amen. No, I don't, couldn't speak. Couldn't speak. Dumb. Number 13, dumb and deaf spirit, Mark 9, 25. And when Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit. So there's a foul spirit. Saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him, and enter him no more. You foul spirit, come out. Number 14, spirit of infirmity. Luke 13, 11, And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity, 18 years, and was bowed together, and could not in no wise lift herself up. Number 15, spirit of divination. Acts 16, 16, and it came to pass, as they went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us and brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. Number 16, spirit of slumber. Romans eleven eight. 8, according to as written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that could not see and ears that should hear, not hear until this day. Number 17, spirit of the world's. 1 Corinthians 2.12, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Number 18, the spirit, prince of the power of the air. Ephesians 2.2, where in times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, that spirit, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Number 19, spirit of fear, 2 Timothy 1, 7, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power of love and a sound mind. Number 20, spirit of antichrist, 1 John 4, 3, and every spirit that confesseth not Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God, and this is the spirit of antichrist. Wherefore you have heard that it should come, even now already is in the world. Let me say something about the spirit of antichrist, okay? There is the person of the antichrist and then there's the spirit of the antichrist which is in the world and many people get confused with that the person who is the antichrist doesn't know he's the antichrist until the spirit of antichrist enters into him when does that enter into him when there's an assassination attempt so nobody knows who this who the antichrist is you know, he, he gets wounded, right? He gets shot, right? One world leader, he's, in his, he's, he's a normal human spirit, and then the devil enters into him, and then he becomes the Antichrist. Because for the first three and a half years of the tribulation period, he brings peace. And then there's a, a, a mortal wound that takes place. Actually, he gets killed. And then, then the devil enters into him, and then all of a sudden, you know, he's the person of the Antichrist. I mean, there's speculation. They think the Pope is the Antichrist. They thought Hitler was the Antichrist. They thought Barack Obama was the Antichrist. You have to understand there's a spirit of Antichrist, and then there's the person of Antichrist. Somebody say amen. amen. Number 21, spirit of error. 1 John 4, 6, we are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth us not, whereby we the spirit of truth, and the spirit of error. Pretty cool, huh? All right, if I can get somebody to go make copies of this. How many would like to have a copy of this? Everybody. (laughs) 
So mostly de Jesus dealt with unclean spirits. That's what he did. You, you, when you look, and I think we ought to operate in the mode that Jesus operated in. Don't you think so? You know, many times he'd say, you foul spirit. Um, I think Sunday we had two people that had cancer, right? You heard me say, you, you foul spirit of death and cancer. Right? You heard me say that, right? Because cancer is an incurable disease. Anything that's incurable, incurable I believe it's a demonic spirit that's behind it. Um, and I, I don't think, like... All sickness is influenced by devils. If all, I, if all you ever ate was Twinkies, 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 I guarantee you're going to end up getting diabetes, diabetes, diabetes. I mean, hello, right? So this is your, your temple. Somebody asked me, you know, recently because I did a funeral and, and the, the, the man was 52 years old. But he looked like he was like 65, 68. It's hard living. And then I was asked, why did he die so young? And I said, well, you only get one body. In the natural, you got to take care of it. I mean, if you abuse it, come on, hello, somebody. It's going to shut down on you. Come on, hello, somebody. I mean, I even heard stories like when he was younger, he was intoxicated and decided to take a dive off the back of a truck at a certain amount of speed and ripped himself open and all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, he had heart issues and he had problems and they think he kind of had a heart attack, you know. But the fact of the matter is, you, you get one body. you got to take care of this body. You want, God wants you to last. Because he said in Psalms 91, with long life, I will satisfy you. Long life, I will satisfy you. You ain't going until you're satisfied. Can you say amen? All right. I want to talk to you also. That was the, that was the first thing. So let's take up an offering. <laughs> Praise God. You want to give, just go ahead and sow. As a matter of fact, uh, I think on Sunday we were at 136000 on the building. We are down to 133. Yeah, so man, that sucker is coming down, which is a really good thing. So we're down to 133 on that. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. I got a, an amazing praise report. Um, Andrew, he has an Aflac account with one of the Hungry Howie's owners here in Plant City. Ollie is his name. And he is over there on Alexander. So um, I went with Andrew and, and talked to Ollie. And I told him, I said, you know, I have a carpet cleaning, tile cleaning business. He said, you do? And I said, yeah. He said, can you give me a price on cleaning the dining room floors and the kitchen floor? I said, absolutely. So I gave him a price. He said, let's do it. So we did it on Monday and Tuesday of this week. So... Monday, um, he just loved the floors and everything. That, and um, so he's Muslim. So I said, you want to see my machine? You know, of course, these guys want to see the machines. Three-cylinder Kubota engine. I mean, huge sucking power. It's just amazing. It's, it's a very expensive machine. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. So he goes, hey, um, you know, I'm Muslim. I said, oh, yeah. He said, and he goes, yeah, I, I sort of kind of, you know. I wanted to tell him, I guess you're a backslidden Muslim because I was like a backslidden Christian. You know, he, so he wasn't really doing his Muslim thing. He said, but I have a couple questions for you. Uh-oh, here we go. He said, um, do you, you know, everything that's going on like in the world with those, these wars. And he said, I know the Quran talks about it. And he said, I know the Bible talks about it. And I said, yeah. And I said, that's in Matthew 24 and 25. He said, yeah, yeah. He said, do you think we're like... In the end time, in the end of days? And I said, yeah, I said, I, I really do. And he said, you think, you know, everything that's coming, like the prophecies are coming to pass? And I said, yeah, they're all coming to pass. And he said, well, does it concern you? And I was like, no, I'm not concerned. And I said, um, Ali, I said, he said, well, you know, um, what about Jesus? And I said, well, I said, if you were to die today, are you 100% sure that you'd make heaven? And he goes, well, I think I, think I, I think I would go to heaven. I think the big God would let me. That's what he said. I think the big God would let me. And he said, and then he goes, well, you know, how do you know what you teach and preach is really the truth? So when he said that, in an instant, I asked the Lord, is there anything wrong with his body? So I get a download. He's got lower back problems, more specifically a sciatic nerve on the right side. So I said, Ollie, you just asked me a question. Listen, Ollie, you just asked me a question. 
How do I know what is true, what I'm teaching and preaching? And I said, this is how you know. You have a, I said, God just spoke to me. I said, I just asked him if there was anything wrong with you. I said, God just spoke to me. You have a lower back problem, more specifically a sciatic nerve problem on the right hip. And I went right there and he went, he just looked at me like in shock. And he goes, uh, he said, that's so right. And he said, as a matter of fact, this morning I had to put my, my leg up on the, he's 28 years old. I had to put my leg up on the chair to, just to tie my shoe. And when I bent over, my back has been killing me. I said, can I pray for you? He said, yes. Yeah. So I put my hand right on his hip in the name of Jesus. He was instantly healed. And I said, if, and he's like, I'm, I normally doubt this stuff. <laughs> so he said, I normally doubt this stuff. And I said, well, if you pick me up, would it hurt my back? Hurt me? And he said, no. He said, well, it would hurt my back if I bend over and touch my toe. I said, bend over, touch your toe. So he bent over and touched his toe, comes up, totally healed. And then I said, would you like to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? And he said, sure would. I said, let's pray right now. So watch this. So God healed him to prove what, <laughs> Woo! to prove what we teach and preach is the truth. That's what signs and wonders are for. Hello. And God healed him right before he got saved. So yesterday I brought him a Bible and all that kind of stuff. So I brought him a, you know, a Passion Translation in the New Testament. Because it's the Aramaic. Did you know that? It's the Aramaic from Aramaic to English. And so he said, thank you so much and all that kind of stuff. And, and then he's like, hey, listen. And then I said, you know, I'm trying to get some accounts for him. He said, oh, really? What, what, which one? And I named the account. He said, I've been trying to get that for like a long time. But my cousin owns... The, the, the hungry howies that services that. I said, well, I know the finance guy. I said, let me call him. He said, well, you'll have to call me or my cousins will be mad at me for stealing the account. I said, don't worry about it. I'll just have Miss Dr. Wood call you. And we want to do you. So I called Dr. Wood, left a message that he, you know, his name is Ali. He just gave his heart to Christ. He's a born again Christian. So listen, if you go by the hungry howies on Alexander, just love on Ali. He's, he, he just go in there and say, hey, how you doing? I heard you gave your heart to Christ and I wanted to hug you. Amen. Yeah, so go, go invade Hungry Howie's. Because this guy's a real giver. And he goes, oh, hey, by the way, Pastor Jack, he said, you know, you're with your carpet cleaning business. He said, why don't you just bring some flyers in for me? He said, we send out 1,500 pizzas a week. We'll put all your flyers with the pizza boxes. And then now I'm starting to panic because I'm like, ah! <laughs> starting to panic now. Pastor Marie, I talked to her on the phone the other day. She's like, honey, just do it. And I'm like, what are you? Just do it. So I'm going to talk to you this evening about three steps of walking in the fog. Favor of God. What about the what? Offering. Bless you people, Jesus. <laughs> Take up the offering. So I'm going to talk to you about three steps of walking in the fog. Favor of God. Walking in the fog. Number one, go to Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7. Three steps to walking in the favor of God. Isn't that amazing? Andrew introduced me to Ali. Within a 24 period, Ali gave his heart to Jesus, got saved. Come on. And he gives huge discounts for the church. He loves church people. He gives huge discounts for Christian schools. I mean, come on. The guy, and get this, he drives a Porsche Panamera. Amen. <laughs> He's 28 years old. Three steps to walking in the favor of God. Number one, well, let me read Galatians 6, 7. Be not deceived, that God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Number one, favor must be a seed from you before it can become a harvest to you. So, Talking with Ali, he's, he's, a, he's, he's a giver. I mean, he, he has a heart to give. Just give. And he's known in this town. Everybody knows Ali. Can you imagine him starting to say, hey, I, you know, Life Family Church, yeah, Pastor, he led me to the Lord, led me to the Lord. Sometimes there's, there's a key that unlocks a city. Sometimes there's a key. Okay, because we have a reputation in this town. It's not a very good one. I'm just telling you, you know. So I, I, there's some tests that I kind of do sometimes. So I, I asked Andrew to, to do something for me on, a, on, the, on the Plant City Word of Mouth. Because sometimes what happens is people will post, does anybody know of a good church in Plant City? Mm 
And then they list like 48 churches, you know. So I, here, was, here was my idea. I need somebody to post. Are there any churches in Plant City that flow in the gifts of the Spirit and preach and teach on the word of faith? It got rejected. It got, it got, you saw it on there, right? You commented, right? Did you see it was removed? Yeah, was it removed? Mm Mm-hmm. Ooh, what the, wow. They made it hidden. And I think there was only like one or two comments, right, when you posted? Just one or two? There certainly wasn't 48. (laughs) We, We didn't make the list. So I'm like, wow, okay. And then Andrew reminded me that when we did the Plant City event with the Spanish, you know, we had like 1,500 people. Well, we posted it on the, on the word of mouth. I'm not going to try to, I'm kind of downplaying it a little bit because I just want to be respectful. But we were slammed. The church is a cult. Us, you, you, you occultish people, <laughs> you. Yeah. Because, you know, sometimes you wonder why, why I mean, why did God plant me here? And I keep finding out one thing after another thing after another thing after another thing. Why God put us here. And it's just total, totally supernatural. I mean, it really is. Wow. It's the favor of God. When God's hands on something in an area, he'll send, he'll send a rescue. He'll send a life preserver. Hello? Favor comes when you give favor to others. Becoming a servant to others will turn and bring others to serve you. Start by serving your family. Serve your pastor and his family. Serve your fellow brother and sister in Christ. Serve your employer. Sow seeds of blessing on someone else, then a harvest of blessing will come to you. Become a problem solver for someone else, and the favor of God will promote you. Become a problem solver for someone else and the favor of God will promote you. So let me tell you how to get a pay raise in 90 days. How many of you would like to get a pay raise in 90 days? Okay. Number one, go to your boss, ask him or her, what is it that they see in you that you can improve in your job performance? I know that's a loaded question, but it's an important question. Number two, go in early and try to be the last one to leave. Number three, when you're given a project, go an extra mile on the projects. Number four, ask your boss, him or her, for three problems they are having difficulty in solving. Volunteer to help try and solve them, then go to God for the answer. Wow. Then go to God for the answer, because he knows everything. Right? Wisdom is the principal thing. Is that what problem says? With, it, with all your getting, get understanding. Joseph solved a dream problem for Pharaoh, and Joseph was promoted to second in command. Go to your boss, ask him or her what he sees in you that you can improve in your job performance, right? When we, when we work for an employer, we were actually to serve them as we were to serve Jesus Christ himself. Come on, hello, somebody. I know for some of you it might be a little difficult to do it, but you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Come on. I mean, when I'm, when I'm cleaning Ollie's Hungry Howie's floor, I'm making sure we're getting all the corners. And then and I listen to him when he pointed out areas that seemed to be trouble areas, and I really concentrated hard on those trouble areas. And one trouble area was in the back was the, the dough mixer. It's huge, weighs a ton. And, he, and when he was showing me around, he said to me two or three times, this little area. So I made sure, I made sure. And when he came in, he went in the back, and we were out in the corner, and there's that dough machine. He's looking all around. He goes, yep, yep, see? He goes, hey, Pedro, come here. Come on, see, see, see? Si. It can get clean. He said, it was, it's just the mop, the mopping and mopping. But I cleaned that entire area to the point that it impressed him. Yeah, because I'm going to serve the Lord. Not only that, I clean the windows for free. Come on. Come on. That's good. 
And then I only did half the kitchen floor because there was some construction stuff going on. And then I lowered the price 200 bucks. I took $200 off. Plus I cleaned the windows. And then he's telling me, oh, well, my uncle's got like 67 stores from the East Coast to the West Coast. And he said, I can send out an email. I'm like, no, 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 no. And then I said, oh, by the way, I know a guy who does AC work and, and repairs restaurant equipment. He said, really? He said, man, these guys are hard to find. I thought I got one in return. He said, what is that? I said, it's all fixed, Matt Costello. Amen. He said, what, will you come on a weekend? He said, these things come up, they seem to fail on the weekend. I said, absolutely, he'll come out and fix it. He said, oh, I need his number. Come on, with the favor of God. You want, you want the favor of God? What you do for others, God will do for you. Come on, what you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. Thank you, Jesus. Number two, this is a real important one. Honoring your parents will bring favor on you. Honoring your parents will bring favor on you. Ephesians 6, 2, and 3 says this. Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. Youth, praise God, amen. Honor your parents will bring favor on you. Ephesians 6, 2, and 3. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. Our parents are the ones who have put up with all of us through our young life. They have paid our bills, fed us, put up with our immaturity, clothed and shelter us, tolerated our attitudes, yet they receive the least love, the least gifts, and at last our respect. This is this. Statistically, it is common for a young man to spend more money on his new girlfriend in the first 90 days than he has spent on his parents in the last 20 years. Oh, snap. Honor your father and mother. Two promises. It'll go well with you, and you'll live long. It'll go well with you. How many need things to go well with you? How many would like to live long, right? Go well with you and live long. I'm going to read to you again. Our parents are the ones who have put up with us through our young life. They have paid our bills, fed us, put up with our immaturity, clothed and sheltered us, tolerated our attitude, yet they receive the least love, the least gifts, and at, and at last our respect. It is common for a young man to spend more money on his new girlfriend in the first 90, 90 days than he has spent on his parents for the last 20 years. All them college kids that decided to be rebellious and we're shipping them all to Pakistan. They shipped them all out. They, they want to be in pa They want to be with the Philistines. Whoa, load you up. You know the Palestinians are the Philistines. Did you know that? That's where it came from. That's where the Palestinians are. So we'll just ship you over there. Wave your flag. We'll load you up. I mean, my God, our government's already bringing people in as enough as it is. Why can't we just haul some college students out? Just get on an airplane, have them be picked up at the bus depot in Palestine. You love them so much? Spoiled little brat. Praise God. All right, number three. Honoring ministers will bring favor of God on you. And Matthew 10, 41 says this. He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. So in other words, you, you take care of the men and women of God and you take care of one another because you were made righteous, which is right standing with God or God's ways of doing and being right. So when you honor, that's the reason why most of the time when I go visit Pastor Rodney, I bring a gift. I got this really cool gift I'm going to get him. I think he'll like it. Yeah, honor. Hello. I mean, either I got a check in hand to give to him, or I or I bring him a small gift. I'm just trying to help y'all. Praise God. Amen. I'm not trying to help myself. I'm trying to help you. You, you. Sometimes people look at Pastor Marie and I. And say, you know, you live in a what a beautiful home. You drive really nice cars. Hello. And then they they look and say, Oh yeah, well it's all from the ministry. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it is not all from the ministry. Come on, hello. Listen, I don't take a salary out of Jack Myers Ministries. That goes straight to the missions account for souls. 
And my board said to me, I could use that money for whatever I want to use it for, but I use it straight for souls. Yeah. Now I get a salary from the church, and then hey, I get a little bit of a salary from my businesses. Hello. And every year they want to give me a raise, and I, I tell them, no, we're good. I'll let you know. Come on, I'll, I'll, we'll let you know. For the first three years when we started the church, I didn't take one. I didn't take a salary. And then all of my nine board members were upset with me because I didn't, because I was robbing the people for an opportunity. So we changed that. And then they voted on a salary to give people an opportunity to sow into the man and woman of God. Hello, so that you can be blessed. Because that's, that's the way God operates. He operates that way. 1 Thessalonians 5, 12 and 13 says this, I beseech you, brethren, to know them that labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in the love for their work's sake and be at peace among yourselves. So if you remembered, I read to you over in the book of Mark on Sunday about how that the... Jewish people, came, Paul was preaching the gospel and salvation came from the Jewish people to the Gentiles and then Paul was admonishing the Gentiles to sow into the Jewish people because they had the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ brought to them, right? So if they sowed spiritual things among us, should it not be so much that we should not read material things from people? Hello. I mean, like I said, remember me saying, what is, what's the price of your salvation? It's priceless, right? Would you, would you gladly give away your house, your two cars? You can get those things back, but I mean, what's the price of your salvation? It's easy to make money. It's hard to keep it. <laughs> that's, the, that's, the, that's the hard part is having the wisdom. Come on, hello, somebody. Anybody can make money. I mean, even, even the bum sleeping underneath the bridge. Come on. You can, you, it's so easy, especially in America, to make money. You can start a recycling business by collecting cans, beer cans, Coke cans, and taking them to the recycle bin here, and then just start saving up your money, saving up your money, and then you buy a truck and all that kind of stuff, and you get yourself eventually get yourself a trailer. Now you're hauling scrap metal and all that kind of stuff, and all of a sudden now you got this huge, over a period of two to five years, a huge recycling business, and you started on the side of the road collecting beer cans. Uh, the American society in our world is, you know, I get something for nothing. There's a sense of entitlement. We, we have close to 20 million people that have crossed the border who have a sense of entitlement. I get my EBT card. I get to live in New York, and I have to have a shelter, and, and I get clothes, off the EBT card, I can get beer if I want to. You know, they, used, they used to limit it to just food. But now you can buy a color TV. You can buy beer now. You can buy all you. It's coming from your finances. Right. So you know what I told the Lord the other day? I got on my knees. I said, man, I got a lot of seed in Ford Nationals. I'll just tell you right now, in the name of Jesus, I got a lot of seed. It's how you look at it. Come on, hello, somebody. Hey. That's good, That's a good word. Right? They're, they're, taking, they're, they're taking out automatically, right? I mean, are you, are you enjoying the FICA tax being taken out? <laughs> I mean, are you enjoying what they're doing? Well, then change your thinking then. Okay, I'm sowing seed. What so, Galatians, right? What does Galatians say? Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. I mean, if they're going to automatically take it out and they keep raising it and raising it and say, all right, well, I got a lot of seed and a lot of people. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for a harvest of hope. A harvest. I mean, I, I'm serious. Come on, hello. So instead of complaining, I mean, have you not been here the last few Sundays about your words? You know, you need to get the podcast. You know, listen to how powerful your words are. I'm sorry, this is the way I kind of think. I'm thinking like, if they're going to take it out, and believe me, yeah. they take it out. That's good, then I'm like, okay, it's seed. It's seed, and seed in people's lives. Yes, no? Yes. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 7 says this, Remember them that have rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow considering the end of their conversation. 
Another translation of Hebrews 13, 17, that was Hebrews 13, 7. Hebrews 13, 17 says, Obey them that have rule over you and submit yourselves, for they watch over your souls as they may give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable to you. I need to read that. Listen, you need to have ears to hear. Listen. Obey them that have rule over you, right? As long as it's not immoral, unethical, or illegal. Immoral, unethical, or illegal. Obey them that have rule over you and submit yourselves for they watch over your soul and they must give an account. Before who? God Almighty. The throne. Watch this. Now he throws this in here. That they may do it with joy and not with grief. So in other words, don't be a problem child. <laughs> don't be a problem child. Be a joyful child, a joyful, obedient child. Don't be a... <laughs> For that is not unpro- that's unprofitable to you. So in other words, just as much as individuals that are in the fivefold ministry and pastoring and so on and so forth have to give account for the people that they preach the gospel to, then the individuals who are listening to the gospel must also give account that they do it with joy or where they are problem child. Hallelujah. Don't give Chrissy a hard time, I'm telling you. She's got a 10-foot angel with a baseball bat. Okay, praise God. What is favor? Favor is in kind regard, support, defense, benevolence shown by word or deed, any act of grace or goodwill, a gift, a present, a token of love to ease, to spare. What is grace? Grace is God's unmerited grace, appropriately the free unmerited love in favor of God, favorable influence of God, divine influence, the influence of the Spirit in renewing the heart and restraining from sin. One day of favor can take you from being a shepherd boy to the prince in the palace. Day. You can be thrown in prison for 15 years and suddenly you answer a dream and you're in charge of the entire land. One day a favor can take an insignificant orphan Jewish girl from being a commoner to saving an entire nation from annihilation. Who was that? Mm-hmm, Esther. We have to keep watch over what we say. See, if you look at your seed that you're giving to our government that's actually being passed to the Ukrainians or passed to these other, or passed to the nationals that are coming across our border, that is your finances. You earn that money. Start taking, talk, telling God, this is my seed. I'm sowing into the nationals. I'm sowing into the nationals, Lord. So not only are you doing 10% and you're giving offerings, but you're also sowing into other people's lives. And I know that they're taking it out on purpose, but it's the way you look at it. Proverbs 18, 21 says this, the tongue can speak words that bring life or death. Those who love to talk must be ready to accept what it brings. Ephesians 4, 29 says, when you talk, don't say anything bad, but say the good things that people need, whatever will help them grow stronger. Then what you say will be the blessing to those that hear it. Did you know that a soft answer increases learning? Husbands, if you need to teach your wives something, a soft answer increases our learning. A soft answer increases learning. First Peter 3.10 says this, the scripture says, if you want to enjoy true life and have only good days, then avoid saying anything hurtful and never let a lie come out of your mouth. These are powerful scriptures. People, you know, need to hear it. If something speaks to you, speak back to it. If your body speaks to you, oh, my knees, oh, my back, oh, my neck, oh, oh. 
man, um, I know I'm supposed to be the head and not the tail, but my tail dragging the day. I mean, just if something speaks to you, speak back to it. Yesterday I drove up and after I finished cleaning the, the, the tile and some carpet, and I, I looked over to the tree that we have. What, what are these trees that we have out here? What are they called? Um, crape myrtle. myrtle. So I have a crape myrtle in my yard. And I noticed the crape myrtle, the, the bark on the crape myrtle was like peeling off. And then I walked up to it, and it's got this fungus all over it. And I was like, no, no, no. So I kind of peeled off the dead bark and everything. I laid my hand on the tree. I paid a lot of money for that tree. Are you, are you kidding me? We got, got flowers. Y'all are looking at me like, you crazy. No, that's all right. I'm in Plant City. Come on. Somebody got to be crazy. Come on. Hello. I said, this is what I said. I said, I curse this blight in the name of Jesus. Like Jesus cursed the fig tree. You obey. You're going to live. And I petted it. I petted the tree. You're going to live and you will not die. And you will Thank blossom you. and you will bloom in Jesus' name. Come on. Thank you. I'm, please forgive me. I want to be like Jesus. I mean, don't you want to be like Jesus? So I'm just going to copy him. I mean, I preach his sermons anyway. I preach Paul's sermons. I mean, why do I need to come up with my own revelation? I mean, hello, somebody. It's already been written. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just going to pe- preach Peter's sermons. I mean, I'm just copying every, from them. I even preach Pastor Rodney's sermons. Why do I need? I, I preach Brother Hagin's sermons. I mean, my gosh. Well, I got a whole drawer, drawer full. Amen. Why do I need to come up with some goofy revelation or something like that? I, I think I'll just stick with the word. I'll, I'll preach Paul's sermons, Jesus' sermons. I'll even preach Moses' sermon. Come on, hello, some, I'll preach Solomon's sermons, you know, and I'll even, I'll even preach King David's sermons. I think they're all good to me. I mean, my gosh, it's an entire, it's like one preacher. I saw, I saw a little bit of an interview, and he was talking about, like, um, some preachers. that He's got preacher friends, and so this guy was having, like, divine revelation, and he's writing all these sermons, like, every single day, and some of his preacher friends were like, what do you mean you're writing sermons every day? He said, it takes me, like, six days to get a sermon for Sunday. He's like, well, I've just been spending time with the Lord. I don't understand that either. Why? I mean, like... Why would it take somebody six solid days to come up with a three-point sermon? I mean, some of the greatest sermons are the shortest sermons. Jesus wept. That's the greatest sermon I've ever heard. I'm just telling you right now, that was the most amazing thing. Come out. That was an amazing message. I'm just telling you, absolutely phenomenal. Give and it shall be given unto you. Oh, my gosh. Press down, shake it together. What an amazing sermon. That was amazing. Have faith in God. That's an amazing sermon right there. I'm just going to tell you, it's so simple. Have faith in God. Anything that's not a faith is sin. That's a powerful sermon right there. Be ye holy as he is holy. That's a powerful sermon right there. It'll change your life. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Making melody in your heart to the Lord. What a powerful sermon is that? What you mean you got a problem in six days to come up with a sermon? I got five minutes to finish my sermon. <laughs> Listen, if something speaks to you, speak back to it. You have aches and pains in your body. I'm, who doesn't? I mean, if you're past 50... Come on, if you're, if you're past 50, it's mostly joints, knees, back. <laughs> Some of you young people are like, yeah, me too, I'm only 28. Okay. <laughs> no, man, I'm in the name of Jesus, this is, here, here's my, my cure, my faith cure, right? My body's the temple of the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus, my shoulders. <laughs> jujitsu for years in the name of jesus all the arm bars man, shot me into praise god amen in the name of jesus i take authority over this pain my body is the temple of the holy ghost no weapon formed against me prospers 
If I'm healed, then I'm always healed. I'm whole and I'm whole in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, that you're my healer. Thank you, God, and your word is true. Thank you, Father, that you're not a liar. By Jesus' stripes, I am healed. Hello? Now, listen, sometimes I'll go take an, an ibuprofen or something like that. There's nothing wrong with that. Hello? Comes from a plant anyway that was planted in dirt. You came from dirt, so there you go. I mean... Am I helping you tonight? All right. Mark 11, 12, 13 to 14. The next day Jesus was leaving Bethany. He was hungry and he saw a fig tree with leaves. So he went to the tree to see if it had figs growing on it. But he found no figs on the tree. There were only leaves because it was not the right time for figs to grow. Jesus said to the tree, people will never eat from you again. His followers heard him say this. So if you've got blight in your crepe myrtle, you go over to it and you lay your hands on it and you start to speak to it because Jesus spoke to trees. What was the tree telling them? I ain't got no figs. The tree cried out to me and said, please lay hands on me. I have blight all over me. Praise God, all over the branches. So I just laid hands. <laughs> I laid hands on the tree, you know, in, in the name of Jesus. The other day, Jesse... She shot out of the front door because, you know, we let her out and go use the restroom. But she hit her, like her toe on one of the, you know, threshold metal pieces, you know. So she kind of, and then she kind of slowed down. And then she started limping. And then she turned around and looked at me. And I grabbed her paw and I said, in the name of Jesus, be healed in Jesus' name. She put the paw down and went and did some business. Praise God. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. To learn more about the ministry and get additional resources, you can visit us at jackmyersministries.com and lifefamilychurch.net.